In this video, we will look at gravity and wind loads acting on this frame structure. Wind loads we'll be looking at on the short face only. Those are resisted by these red rigid frames that are parallel to the wind direction on this face. We would, of course, need to do wind loads on the long face, but that's not part of this video. They would be the same process as we're doing right here. So let's begin with some dimensions on the structure. We have 20 foot bays on the short face, four of those for 80 feet altogether. 30 foot bays on the long face, five of those altogether gives us 150 feet. There are some beams that are not shown here for clarity. Those are 10 feet on center. So here's our 20 foot bay and then uh, the tributary width to each of those is going to be 10 feet leaving us a five foot tributary width on the edge beams. And that's going to provide some additional load onto our rigid frame. So we start out with our gravity loads. Those are 50 pounds per square foot on the roof and 150 pounds per square foot on the floor, meaning we have uniform loads on the roof. Multiply the 50 times five to give us 250 pounds per foot on the roof. And 150 times five gives us 750 pounds per foot on the floor. We additionally have some concentrated loads on the frame that are due to the tributary area of the um, blue beams that are shown here that have reactions on either end. So the tributary area that's coming as a concentrated load to that girder that's supported by the frame is 300 square feet on the roof. That gives us a total of 15 kips on the beam or seven and a half kips on either end of that beam that is supported by the frame. On the floor that comes out to 22 and a half kips on either end of that beam. Next we look at the wind loads. So the wind is acting on the short face as we said and it's acting as a pressure across this entire surface. And that's shaded in the blue. There's also a suction force on the back side but we can combine those together as a total of 15 pounds per square foot on the front surface here as shown. That load is being distributed by tributary height in the way that beams receive load by tributary width. So we divide half the distance between the foundation and the first floor and half the distance between the uh, this first floor and second floor. Those are our distances. So the shaded area here that is the total height that the load is being supported on the second floor and the blue shaded area here is the total height that's being supported by the roof level. The wind pressure then accumulates as a linear load along the edge of the floor diaphragm and also along the edge of the roof diaphragm. Now we don't need to worry about that half on the ground floor because that's going right down to the foundation. So next we'll calculate that value of the linear force taking our given 15 pounds per square foot wind load, which includes uh, calculations that involve height, terrain, wind speed, and so forth. So the tributary height of the floor plate is half the distance above and below that floor plate, comes out to 13 feet. Multiply that by our 15 pounds per square foot of the area load gives us 195 pounds per foot. At the floor level, the tributary height is only half the distance, or six feet, and that gives us a linear load of 90 pounds per linear foot along the length. Now those linear forces along the roof here and also along the floor here, they're attempting to slide the horizontal diaphragm shown in light green here on the roof and in light beige on the floor. They're trying to displace those but they can't because the system is all tied together. The forces are then transmitted through the diaphragm until they reach the rigid frame. These then become concentrated loads at the roof level and at the floor level. And we calculate that just like a beam that the end reaction of a uniformly loaded beam is WL over two. So we get 7.8 kips at the roof and 3.6 kips at the floor level. So these are the loads that then we transfer onto our frame diagram. So here we have the gravity load shown in red. We have uh, 250 pounds per foot, 0.25 kip per foot on the roof lever as a uniform load from those edge beams. 750 pounds per foot, 0.75 kips per foot on the floor from the edge beams. Seven and a half kips concentrated from the perpendicular girders that are framing into those columns and 22 and a half kips from the 
perpendicular girders at the floor level, and then our previously computed 3.6 kips concentrated at the roof and 7.8 kips concentrated on the floor. So that defines all of our loads for the rigid frame, and now we can go through and analyze it as was done in the previous video. I hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments.